Hey everybody! Today's lesson is on writing linear equations. So this lesson combines two things that we already learned how to do. Number one, writing a word statement as an expression, which we did in the beginning of this chapter, and then solving equations. So when we say writing linear equations, we're combining the two. We're going to read a word sentence write it as a mathematical equation, and then solve it. So let's take a look down here. When we have a word statement, the word is is an important word. It means equals. I'm gonna write that in here. Make sure you're writing this in your notebook as well. Equals, so when we say is, that's when we know to use the equal sign. And you'll see what I mean by that when we do our examples down below. Okay, so here we have three examples. And I want you guys to write these down in your notebook and copy down these notes as we go along. Number one, we have 7 less than x is 15. Now this part right here, 7 less than x. You know how to write that. We've done that before. 7 less than x means x minus 7. But then we have, you know, let's make this a color. But then we have, after that part, is 15. And what did we say the word is means? Equals. So 7 less than x equals 15. If I was going to keep writing that, that means x minus 7 equals 15. There we go. We wrote our equation. So 7 less than x is 15, which is the equivalent as writing x minus 7 equals 15. Now that we have this equation, we can solve it. And we know how to solve these one-step equations because that's something we also learned. We have x minus 7. We're going to do the inverse operation, which is addition. So instead of doing minus 7, we're going to do 15 plus 7 to figure out what x equals. And we see here that x equals 22. So we did two things. First, we wrote this sentence as an equation and then we solved it to figure out what x equals. So that's what we're going to be doing for the rest of this lesson. In number two, I have 24 is three times a number y. So, let's get started. 24 is, actually before I write, 24 is, what did we say the is means? Equals. So we can write 24 equals, equals what? 3 times a number y. So how do we write that multiplication? 3 times y. There's my equation. This equation is equivalent to this word sentence. 24 is 3 times a number y. 24 equals 3y. Now that we have this equation, we can solve it. 24 equals 3y, well this is multiplication, so we are going to do the inverse and do division. We're going to be doing 24 divided by 3, so we know that y equals 8. There's our answer. So two important things here. Number one, we wrote it as an equation, and then we solved it. All right, let's take a look at this last one. We have half of a number x. Half of a number x. There's two ways you can write that. We can write that as one half x, or we can write that as x divided by two. And we know we can do this because when you cut something in half, you're dividing it by two. So x divided by 2 is the same thing as 1 half times x. 
And then we have is 9. So that means 1 half x equals 9, or x divided by 2 equals 9. Either way is okay. They are the same equation. They are equivalent to one another. So now if we go to solve this, this is division. The opposite of division is multiplication, 9 times 2. We're multiplying by 2, and we see that x equals 18. Okay, so this is how we write equations from word problems, and then we solve them. On this next page, actually, let's only look at a little bit for right now. On this next page, we, you are going to be trying a few examples on your own. But before we do, I'm going to give you two more examples to practice. Let's do them together right now. 16 is, that means 16 equals, because is means equals, the difference of x and 5. Well, we know that difference means subtraction, so that means we have x minus 5. And now if I wanted to solve this, this is subtraction, so I add 16 plus 5. And we get our answer to be, I guess I'll have to bring this down. Oh, I'm out of room. We get our answer to be 16 plus 5 is 21. So 21 is our value of x. First I wrote my equation, then I solved it. Number 5 over here, the quotient of x and 4. Well, quotient means division, so I know that this is going to be x divided by 4 is 10. That means equals 10. So here we have x divided by 4 equals 10. To solve this, we are going to use the inverse of division, which we know is multiplication. We're going to multiply by 4. 10 times 4 is 40. So we know that x equals 40. So there's our other two examples. So now, I want you guys to pause this video. Let me move this up so it's a little less confusing. I want you guys to pause this video right now, copy down all of these examples, and try them by yourself in your notebook. I would like you to first write the equation, and then second, solve it for the variable. Okay, you can do that right now. All right. Now that you have done all of these problems in your notebook by yourself, we can go ahead and check our answers. So number six, the sum of a number x and 4 equals 12. Sum means addition. That would be x plus 4 equals 12 would be my equation. Once you have that equation and you solve it, you should get the answer x equals 16. Well, that's not right. <laughs> Whoopsies x does not equal 16 here. What should x really equal? Yes, x should equal 8. Sorry about that. This is why it's important to check our work. Alright, number 8. 9 times a number b is 36. That's multiplication, so our equation is 9b equals 36. To solve for b, we do the inverse, we do the division. So 36 divided by 9, b equals 4. Number 10, 54 equals 9 more than a number t. More than is addition, so our equation is 54 equals 9 plus t. Now since this is addition, we do subtraction to figure out what t equals. t equals 45. Number 12. 11 is the quotient of a number y and 6. So 11 is means 11 equals, and then we know quotient means division. So your equation should read 11 equals y divided by 6. And then when you multiply that to do the inverse operation, you see that y equals 66. All right, moving on down to the bottom. Number 7. 
a number y decreased by 9 is 8. Decreased means subtraction, so your equation is y minus 9 equals 8. Then we do the inverse operation to solve for y, and we get that y equals 17. Number 9 says that a number w divided by 5 equals 6. Well, that one's pretty straightforward. You should have w divided by 5 equals 6. When we solve for w, we use the inverse operation. We're going to multiply, and you should get that w equals 30. Number 11 says 5 is one-fourth of a number c. So there's two ways you could have written this. You could have written 5 equals one-fourth c, or you can do 5 equals c divided by 4. One-fourth is the same thing as dividing by 4, so both of these equations are okay. When we solve that, the inverse of division would be multiplication. You should get c equals 20. And last, we have 9 less than a number n equals 27. 9 less than a number n means that you do n minus 9. Make sure you have it written in this order. That's important. n minus 9 equals 27. Then you use addition as your inverse operation to solve for n. We get that n equals 36. And that's it. Thank you for watching.